Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is mia mohsen zia also known as mia no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook format on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios and sponsored by international award-winning author mia mohsen zia of missing the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia molson if you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and even love endorsed by Howard celebrities including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and over 40 podcast platforms in over 110 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Also on HamiltonRadio.net, Oldies Radio, Diamonds FM, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear, and more. Makes great gifts 24-7 for your loved ones. Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Ones, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with three terrific comedians here on the Mike Widener Show. And uh, this involves a brand new series bringing three Asian American immigrant co- comics together, each sharing their personal journey to America as immigrants. We'll talk about that. And um, we have a lady who was... Um, Smuggled from the Philippines uh, by her biological mom, becoming her hope for the American dream. We also have another who uh, was adopted by a white family and um, sent home and sent with a cookbook. And also we have another who learned English by watching Sister Act. And I hope Whoopi Goldberg is uh, watching this one. Maybe just um, be inspired by this one as well, too. And um, live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Los Angeles, we have three amazing comics on there. All coming together, sharing their stories in in a in a series called Asian American Eyes, an immigrant comedy special, which is on the Real Women's Network, which debuted last month. Ladies and gentlemen, these are very multi-talented people: Nikki Andres, Anna Parsons, and Aiden Park. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. 
Hello. <laughs> Excited. Hello. I want one of your pillows like yesterday. <laughs> I can't believe. Wait, well, you know something too? Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, like to do some shopping. Uh, tote bags are available too. If you got some uh, pets like a little chihuahua or uh, throw a kitty cat, you can um, put them in tote bags, you know, escape and everything. I mean, they do make great conversation pieces, I'll tell you. So <laughs> I want to put a pillow in there and a copy of Missing. Oh, there you go. You know what? I think that's a great combination. I love that. <laughs> <I'm guessing. Yeah. laughs> oh, we'll definitely get something out to you. So you guys, you guys all come together in a brand new series, bringing all of you guys together, immigrant uh, together, each sharing their personal uh, journey to America as immigrants. And um, let's start off with um, Anna. You are a small, you are small young from the Philippines by your biological mom becoming a Hope for the American Dream, and of course, you're um, actress, comedian, writer, producer. You appeared in uh, Adam Ruins Everything on True TV, and the um, the Affair, Dexter on Showtime, and also worked with um, Labyrinth Theater Company, stand up comedy with David Arquette, and of course, we also got um, Aiden as well too. Uh, learned English by watching Sister Act, and it was a funny movie, by the way, and um, also a highlight of Whoopi's career, and. Um, you're also a comedian, a best-selling actor, keynote speaker. Also, uh, you were in uh, Totally Street Fighter, Trauma, Jeremy Lin, of course, The Art of uh, Being Yay. And um, we also have Nikki, um, a, a really unique story, adopted by a white family and uh, sent with a cookbook. And you make me hungry, by the way. I love cooking. And um, also, you're Asian-American, non-binary, uh, trans-feminine, um, queer actor, comedian, voice artist, audiobook narrator, involved in One Day at a Time, The Dropout. NCIS LA and uh, Venomo and more. And we're here to talk about Asian American Eyes, an immigrant comedy special on the Real Women's Network. And before we uh, talk about that special, guys, tell us how first got started. Take turns. <laughs> wait, wait, what's the question? <laughs> yeah, tell us how you first got started. Like all of us, like this project or just all of us in... Um, well, let's just, let's just go one at a time here. So who wants to go first? Anna, go first. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it, it came together because, uh, I, I met Nikki in an acting class and Aiden and I met on set many, many years ago. Um, and actually Aiden was our inspiration to start writing comedy, um, because we've been auditioning a lot in Hollywood and we were like, we just need to tell our own stories. Um, and so it, I just had in a meditation, it came to me, I was like, oh, we're all immigrants. Like, why don't we come together and do something special with our stories and create something that um, that is unique in its own way. And so that's how it happened. And, and I pitched it to them and they were excited and, and we made it on a no bones budget. We did it ourselves. People came and just gave their time and it's incredible how far it's come and I'm excited to share it. Mm, that's really interesting. And uh, Anna, tell us how you first got started in the business. <laughs> Um, I, well, I studied in New York City. I studied uh, musical theater. So I, I got a degree in jazz hands, which took me really far. Um, mm. and then being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I did. I was a total theater nerd. And then I moved, um, actually to LA to be close to my family. And I've just continued to, uh, you know, do theater and TV and commercials. Um, and then I started doing stand up, which like allowed me to start writing because, my belief is like we have to create the change that we want to see on television, which for me is people of color and very Filipino. So um, that's how it's it's evolved. And I'm still still at it, guys. I'm still at it. Mm -hmm. and, and did your mom manage to uh, achieve the American dream when you got uh, smuggled in by your uh, biological mom? She did. Um, and Amazing. I think and I, I talk about it in the special. I feel like she is like watching all of us right now. And she's she's here and so proud of of what we did um yeah so it's it's really it's really exciting i'm really proud of this my family's proud of it yeah mm, that's rather interesting as well too and um what was it one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career um well those definitely those like five cent residuals that i get those are really exciting no, <laughs> <laughs> we all love those right guys 14 um, cents yeah <laughs> 14 cents <laughs> Um, you know, I think right now, because I've been so focused on writing and I write a lot of spec television, um, again, around the Filipino American experience. And one time I had a reading of a pilot that I wrote called The Asian that didn't 
And we had the reading and a Filipino, um, a, d- a dance troupe, I used to dance in a dance company. Um, he came up to me and he said to me, you know, you're telling my story because he was gay in Texas, Filipino, he didn't fit in. And he was like crying. And I, I started crying. And I was and I was like, wow, I'm actually I wrote this thing. And he heard it. And he felt seen. So like, how powerful is storytelling? Um, so that that is one bit that keeps me going. And I'm excited to create more. Mm, that's mm-hmm. rather interesting, too. And uh, Nikki as well, too, that um, Asian American, non-binary, trans feminine, uh, queer actor, comedian, um, voice artist, a- audiobook narrator as well. And um, you also have a really unique story as well, too, adopted by white family and you're sent with a cookbook. And, um, you, you know, tell us about uh, how you got started in business and uh, what was the name of that cookbook? And so you make me hungry already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the cookbook was beautiful. It was this um, Xerox pamphlet with staples in it and it was called korean cooking for yeah it was i mean i mean it's an import it's you know it's an antique now at this point but um the (laughs) i i think it's you know all jokes aside i mean um i was adopted as an infant and i think that you know the adoption agency had prepared for older children who had already become accustomed to, um, you know, uh, Korean cuisine and grown up with it, um, you know, to have an easier transition into, you know, Europe or America and the West, um, you know, who, you know, I, I mean, like where I grew up, there was no Asian grocery store. I had, you know, a lot of the ingredients that, were, you know, were um, replacements. <laughs> and so it ended up tasting good. But like a Western fusion, sort of American. Wow. I mean, very Asian American, actually. You know, like my mom did her best. I loved it, but it was not authentically Korean tasting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I uh, I got started. Um, gosh, you know, it, it's always funny uh, exploring this question for for artists. I, uh, for me, it, you know, being an artist is an existential imperative. And I, I think before I had any language or... Um, wanted to or or identified as an an artist or an actor or performer i you know it's just a a natural inclination i had an affinity for making people laugh and um sort of uh i i think about it as um like curating in like emotional moments so whether it was uh you know dancing on the coffee table pretending to be michael jackson or you know uh, hopping around on a broom, pretending to be the witch from <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. Um, you know, it was it was it was always something. I had a big imagination, and um, and I was I have and still am relatively shameless about self expression. <laughs> That's rather interesting. And uh, what was it one precise moment that simply influenced you into do what you're doing for the rest of your career? Oh, you know what? I would well, you know, let me say this one. Um, I came out as trans like midway I guess midway through at this point <laughs> um after several years um building a resume in TV and film um as a cisgender gay boy and it, it was my first guest star on a show called Sullivan and Son on TBS and they uh the breakdown which for non-Hollywood folks is kind of like the casting notices that go out. It's like a, it's like a jobs wanted. <laughs> it's it's our version of jobs wanted. And then mm-hmm. you like apply by auditioning. And, um, this, and mine was, this audition was described as a quote, drag queen, unquote. Um, and it was like one of those um, gender confusion jokes, uh, which these days I think is a little problematic, but um, at the time you, it, it was, they were trying something. And um, I, I booked it. It was my first guest star. It was a sitcom. I love sitcoms because I feel like they're a good blend of the live theater and TV and film. And um, the casting director came up to me like on on set and just expressed how grateful she was that um, they had found me. Um, and she said something to the effect of, you know, we didn't really know how to describe what we were looking for. And we just we saw a lot of funny gay guys. But, you know, you came in and you were just a girl. And that to me was like what I didn't know I needed to hear it. But as a person who does not experience um, dysphoria in my body, like um, I like my body, (laughs) but um, I, you know, being a a trans person, um, I wanted to live as a different gender than I was assigned when I was born. 
um, I, you know, having that kind of feedback and um, having someone see the real me inside someone I didn't even know, you know, no friend, not a friend, no one with any vested interest in my happiness or well-being, just somebody with the kind, honest word um, really for me uh, signaled for me, it was time to come out and that I really was trans. And so that changed the whole second chapter of my career. And I ended up mm. having to really kind of start over. I didn't work for five years. And then um, I just started again with co-stars and have been you know, building back up into guest stars and um, then regular or going for um, series regulars uh, this pilot season. So it's, it's, it's been kind of a double journey for me. And, but, but that moment I, I do hold and treasure as um, a significant mm. turn. That's a very interesting journey, I got to say that. And then, Aiden, uh, let's go over to you here. You're a comedian, best-selling author, keynote speaker. You've been totally street fighter, trauma, Jeremy Lin, art of being a. You learned English by watching Sister Act. And um, and, and, and tell us how you got started in the business, y'all, besides watching Sister Act. So. <laughs> how I got started in show business? Yes. Okay, well, um, I, <laughs> I, well, I did a high school musical. I did a high school musical. And, uh, you know, what was funny. I moved to the United States when I was nine and back in Korea, I was like a good student. I had a lot of friends and stuff. And I moved here, couldn't speak the language. I couldn't, um, I, I wasn't good at anything all of a sudden academically. And, uh, my mom ha- actually got blackmailed into going across the country with the threat oh. of being reported to the INS by this really awful man. Um, and so I kind of, lost everything and so from nine to about 14 i was very um very sad because i didn't feel like i was good at anything i had no real emotional support um it was just very difficult being raised by my grandmother in government housing you know and then i auditioned for a musical in the high school and then uh, I was like, oh, I got in the ensemble barely. Mm. Oh, I couldn't. I mean, I, mean, I couldn't even do a box. I was, I was, it was just uh, pathetic. And I still talk to the drama teachers, and I'm just like, how did I get in? And I was like, I'm pretty sure they were just feeling sorry for me. Anyway, so I got in, and I felt like, oh, I, I have something that I might be maybe kind of good at, and so it actually gave me a lot of gave me a reason to live. I would say because I really did. Like even at that young, twelve, thirteen, I was like, why am I here? Like, I don't even know. I felt so hopeless. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's how I got started. And uh, I loved it. It was fun. So I kept A going. happy origin story. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Very happy indeed. And of course, yeah. uh, before that, I mean, you made me laugh. Literally, I say that being a comedian, like you'll see on stage. And um, <laughs> it, it was at one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career. As a comedian or as like a performer or just uh, ju- just in general, like in your career, it, c- it can be a comedian, performer. Okay. It's up to you. The, the one precise so moment I said theater because I did nine productions of Miss Saigon. Uh, I, I got I got pretty good at musicals, but I did nine productions <laughs> of Miss Saigon. And I was like, I don't want to see a 10. So um, I, <laughs> I was no. like more than number 10. <laughs> I'm not going to do double digits of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not gonna happen. so I was like, all right. So what can I do to express myself without having to necessarily, um, you know, have to do another production of Miss Saigon? And uh, I, uh, I I got into comedy and I, I, I was like, this is it. So I decided to put all my eggs in the basket of comedy, stand up comedy um, and and kind of move in that direction uh, to lean into self-expression. That's kind of what happened. And I would say that was a defining moment. Hmm. That's really interesting. And uh, guys, who are some of your favorite uh, actors, comedians, and um, also movies and shows when you guys were growing up? So uh, again, take turns. Who are some of your favorites growing up? Actors, comedians, like that. Um, well, in terms of comedians, I'm like super old school. So I love the Richard Pryor, the Eddie Murphy raw. I mean, that stuff back in the day was just like, was every him in that red suit just like swaying out you know what i mean like and i think that that was the interesting thing too as i think back on it was his stories came from you know this sort of a semblance of trauma with his like mom like hitting him and stuff but he found a way to make it really really funny um so i'm like super down with that old school the old school comedy i love mark maron too he's not very old school but 
Mm, that's really interesting. I guess the slap takes on a different meaning these days after uh, what happened to the, uh, the academies. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, Nikki or uh, Aiden, Aiden, go ahead. Uh, who are some of your favorites growing up? Margaret um, Cho definitely made oh sorry this is nikki speaking for <laughs> this is an audio medium <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's okay it's just like well <laughs> you, you you can say it's just it's just I a group conversation go ahead <laughs> <laughs> go oh, ahead uh, nikki okay I'll, I'll go <laughs> um uh, margaret cho is my number one i would say that seeing margaret um and uh her hbo special and then um and i'm the one that i want was one of those moments of an Asian person on television and um, her, her show, All American Girl, was, was my sister and I were in love with that. Um, you know, it gave me the 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 just the hope, the the idea that someone like me could be on TV or even be successful in this business at all. Um, and and also just her her sense of humor, her her, her raunchy, sex positive gay inclusive um just a a brand is is very much my sense of humor and i i would say if anything it took me a really long time to develop my own comic voice because i was so in love with margaret and her material i didn't have anything original to say i was just really good at retelling all of my favorite margaret cho jokes (laughs) um and then these days my favorite um comics are inspired our special ali wong and um hannah gadsby Wow, that's really interesting. I seem to like that. That is amazing. And um, and then Aiden, how about some of your favorites uh, growing up? Margaret Cho, actually, when I first moved to the U.S., I was nine, and I saw her on TV, and I was like, "Oh, there's Asian people on TV in the U.S. Who knew?" Um, <laughs> really. Um, and we went on to perform together, Margaret and I, and she ended up writing the foreword to my book. Um, and so it was a really big winning moment for me, actually. And then because she influenced me a lot, being a little in closet gay boy in San Francisco, you know, watching our specials was really special. Was really, well, watching our special was really special. <laughs> <laughs> Very special, 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 special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right go, yeah, so, ahead. go yeah, ahead you so continue Mar- so <laughs> yeah no i'm just gonna tag on that that margaret actually did watch our special and let aiden know that she thought it was really it was wonderful and so I, I think it meant a lot to all of us the fact that she took the time and then and, and liked it so wow that's interesting and uh aiden you can continue with your story as well too what what was the question <laughs> <laughs> now, now some of your other your other favorite comedians growing up you know what? I watched this Paula Poundstone special and she just ribbed the audience. And I'm a very audience work heavy comedian, um, which I have to rein in for the specials, which is proud <laughs> <laughs> half my show. So um, but our, uh, Paula Poundstone just went at the audience like that was her thing. And so I really loved that approach. So, yeah, Paula Poundstone. Mm. Paula Poundstone. That's interesting. I remember watching her as well, too. And um yeah, you know, I think we started a comedy club did that in Judy Tenute, and I think Carrot Top was uh, in his uh, younger days. And uh, well, I, I have to say one thing: it's like watch who you're heckling because that person could be famous. And um, and of course, we'll talk about your uh, the special you guys all coming together, Asian American Eyes, in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Whitener Show at the Mike Show dot com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. 
Missing by me and Muslim Z has garnered great reviews and even beloved and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by me and Muslim Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Wagner Show on over 40 podcast platforms and over 110 countries at themikewagnershow.com. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia for great books, merchandise, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Wagner You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with three terrific comedians here on the Mike Wagner Show. Call themselves the Asian Comics. It's a brand new series um, bringing three Asian American uh, immigrant comedians together, each sharing their personal um, journey to America's immigrants. It's called Asian American Eyes, an immigrant comedy special featured on the Real Women's Network. We have um, Nikki Andres. We have uh, Anna Parsons and um, Aiden Park as well, too. We talked about their stories and uh, how they came together. And of course, um, you, you just have like a really, really common theme as well, too. And um, just just coming together, sharing stories and um, also the fact that um, sharing stories alike and, um, you know, the making of the special and everything. And um, I, I guess what was just the inspiration and the reason behind this as well, too, It's being directed by um, Felipe uh, Figueroa as well, too. And um, I mean, just just really heartwarming as well. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was like, again, it was a, a, a thing where I think we, you know, I pitched it. We all, uh, Anna, I pitched it and uh, we all came together and we had about a year long process of rehearsal and rewriting things and making sure things were fitting, taking things out that didn't work. Um, you know, just coming together as a team and, and, and putting it all together. And we actually shot it the, a week before the pandemic. So, I mean, I'm t- a week to the day, like yeah. the, the week it shut off a week after and we were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we were able to get this shot, you know, because had it been a week later, it, you know, wouldn't have happened. So it was, it was practically a miracle. And now that it's out and people are really responding to it, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And Nikki and uh, Aiden, you can also uh, chime in as well too, from your perspectives. Yeah. Yes. And I, I, I uncovered it all, but yeah, the, oh. it, it, it was like six days. And then LA locked down and the pandemic. So it was just, it was a, it was a whirlwind. And I, I guess funny story for me, I had a, I had calcium deposits in my right eyelid, which Ooh. I had to go to the emergency room and get removed a day before we shot. Oh, so no. that, like, <laughs> yeah. So in my, like I was having anxiety thinking, Oh, we should reschedule it. Like, and I changed my outfit, my makeup, everything. I just made everything red because I figured, oh, if I'm just in a bunch of shades of red, maybe no one will notice that one of my eyes is bloodshot. And oh. so it would be, it's just the the juxtaposition between like that happening right before we shot and then the pandemic. I was just happy that I could be present and hanging out with my friends <laughs> because I, you know, devolved into a puddle of anxiety for a year afterwards. <laughs> That's so interesting. I'm sitting here going... Oh, that's a good trick. Is that what you do? Like, is that like if you have a red eye, like you just were red, and then well, kind of I think it worked because like when you watch it, it's not like it pops out at you. No, but like no. I was gonna wear like a blue frock. I was gonna like have my hair done differently, and I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to just everything monochromatic. <laughs> <laughs> With your teeth, red, white, and blue, so America. Red, white. Oh, there you go. Uh, and I want to tag on that that when we were shooting a special, I don't know if you guys had this happen when you were working up there, but um, there were moments that I think, especially at the end of my um, of my set, where you know you're you're in the moment and you're telling the joke, but like I think the beauty of what our special does is that it's not just ha ha, it's ha ha and cry cry. It's like it it connects to you and it like tugs at your heart. So I had this moment where I was like um, at the end and I'm saying Mahal Kita, I'm saying I love you, my mom, you know, as my mom, and I'm looking in the audience and I just see people in tears. Like I just mm-hmm. see them like so moved by it. And uh, that was just incredible, you know, because there's nothing like that where in the sense of like you expect a comedy special to be like, you know, ha ha, you're going to walk out and it's like, but people were like, oh my gosh, this is the night of storytelling. This is like, and this like, it connected to them. So that was, uh, it was pretty beautiful. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And you talked on that. Um, 
earlier on just the power of 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 the storytelling and we've all said you know how seeing someone like margaret show on tv uh, when we we're younger i mean the, the visibility i like it can't be taken for granted i like i don't think that we can overstate the importance of how the stories we tell reflect what's going on in 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 the world and then and when people are left out of that of participating in that there's this whole chunk of human experience that is left invisible um and untold and th- the best stories i think are universal human experiences and the diversity of specific details mm. that come in from different perspectives whether you're uh you know what no matter your gender or your race or your religion or upbringing or age like the best stories are all going to have that core heart i think and it, the exciting fun part for me as an both an artist and an audience member is to be surprised and feel deep feelings told from many different perspectives i, I think that's the most beautiful part um and and of the human connection and storytelling and 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 that was one of our artistic goals and i i think we really delivered on that i'm really proud mm that is quite interesting. And of course, Aiden, you can also, um, you know, chip in as well to like some of the stories you shared and everything else and, um, you know, how you connected and everything. And I got to say this, like, you've got great potential to be one of the, one of the best comedians out there. So <laughs> and if you want to just do a little comedy skit, uh, go, go at it. So. <laughs> well, yucka, yucka, yucka. <laughs> yucka, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, well <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you. Um, my, I have personal, uh, this is meaningful because Anna and I met in 2009 doing being extras for a music video called I Love College mm. when we looked like college students, you know, and I just moved to L.A. and she was the first person I met, like, and we both did Shakespeare in a sea of just like college kids. It's like, I, I want to be a star. Like, and then she and I really connected over theater and I met Nikki because I lost my partner. It was my first birthday. It was, it was Anna's birthday party. And I lost my partner the first Anna's birthday after I lost my partner. And I was a mess. And I met Nikki. And, but like, we, we like immediately were like, who are you? And we <laughs> asked her, yeah. what? Who are you? And so we all kind of did this thing together. We had this connection and we met during a really challenging, for me at least personally, transition time. You know, I moved to LA and, and you know, that's, a, that's my partner. And I, I, I felt, that, and so for us, the three of us to stand together on this, meaningful, really meaningful on a personal level. And, you know, beyond the us being Asian or us being immigrants, on a personal human level, really special to me these people you know so yeah Mm -hmm. yes that's very interesting as well too and uh maybe some other stories you wanted to share as well too and also um some of the more interesting ones and maybe like um some of the challenges that um you guys encounter or maybe what are some of the things that uh you want you want the audience to uh come away with after uh, watching the special Oh, there's so many things I want the audience to come away with. Um, I think, uh, Felipe said it and, uh, or I'm going to badly quote him, but like that, you know, you feel like you're other, but just to remember when you're watching this, that there are other others out there and that you're not alone in that experience. And like, um, I mean, I, I was joking the other day and I, I talked about this in another interview that like I'd grown up watching John Hughes movies and The Breakfast Club was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Oh, I, I saw, love I, it. Yes. Love, love it. The Breakfast Club. And like there was something about the the being in high school and not fitting in and just being a dork and like not, you know, just feeling very other that he in his storytelling, he's a white guy in Shermer, Illinois, writing the story. And I'm like, how do I connect? But it was that humanity. It was that feeling of like, Oh, this is a universal feeling of feeling other. So like, I, I guess I'm hoping people walk away with like that. It's okay. You're not alone. And like, we're all, we all exist. We're all out here being other. <laughs> yeah. Well said. <clears throat> I just to yes. And that I, I, and, and double down on what I said before it's, it's, I think that 
all of us bring our our stories to that theme. Um, but we're all really different too. And I just I love the overlap between the 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 glorious diversity of experience, but the sameness in in heart. Um, and so, yeah, I hope people walk away feeling affected, moved, um, and like they had a really fun time with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, Andy, you, you can go ahead as well, too. Well, I, I just think the three of us really. We were pushed to put our hearts on the line and really push the edge here, um, uh, you know, uh, and be funny. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know, you, you know. I, I don't know what's her what's her face. Whitney Cummings said our co- comedian's job is to push the boundaries and you know to make you think. And then Mark Maron said, "Yeah, and don't forget funny. Don't forget." Funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're funny, you know? but you know, really, our director pushed. Me. I mean, I was going to go a different direction with my thing, even up until the last day. Like, uh, like the day before, I had a whole different set, and he was like, "No, I need you to push this." So mm-hmm. it really had me delve into the heartbreak of of losing a partner and. Uh, you know, getting HIV, actually, that was a rough thing to share. And I'd never done that before on a public platform. So the, 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 we, we were all being pushed to really put our hearts on the table um, and be funny. So um, yeah. we did it. So, yay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really proud of this. It's so awesome. <laughs> and, so, and something, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something and to yes, and that I think something you said, Aiden, and and another um thing that the the power of the vulnerability, right? It's like there's so much power in being vulnerable and in being sort of naked in this way, where we're naked and funny, um, but vulnerable, and like that's how people connect. That's how, and I think that that's how the special is going to connect to people is because we are. Hmm. That's and really- it is funny. <laughs> And it's funny. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's right. Naked and funny. I seem to like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then lastly, where can we find uh, Asian American uh, eyes uh, at as well, too? Where can we find all that? So it's on the Real Women's Network, uh, and you can rent or purchase our special there. And you can, it's a streamer and uh, R E E L. Oh God, R E E L V. Oh my God, you guys are not so real, real is in movie real. <laughs> real yeah, movie real as in movie real. Yeah. Uh, and you can rent or purchase us, and then you can like cast it on your TV and watch us on the big screen. Okay. All right. We'll certainly check that out. And what's coming up for the Asian comics and more? You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Wagner Show.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, International Warring Author, Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the Asian comics of Nikki, Anna, and Aiden after this time out. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the Asian comics from Asian American Eyes, the American comedy special on the Real Women's Network on the Mike Wagner Show with Nikki Andres, Anna Parsons, and Aiden Park. And you guys have been absolutely fantastic. And what can we expect from you guys in 2022 and beyond, either as a group or individually? 
So I'm working, I'm Anna, I'm uh, working, uh, I'm writing. So I'm actually polishing up a couple uh, pilots that I've been working on, both, uh, actually everything I literally write is about the Filipino American experience. Um, so I'm working on a Filipino sitcom and then another um, sort of dark comedy about being a failed Asian, a failed Filipino because I didn't become a nurse. So I'm, <laughs> I'm working, working on some TV stuff. Okay. And uh, Aiden? Um, well, huh, believe it or not, I'm going to be on... <laughs> I'm going to be on the OnlyFans first comedy show because they're trying to break out of porn. And so they were like, we want you to I do love this. comedy. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, oh, I passed for like, okay looking. And I was like, yeah, I was but, like the third choice, but still, whatever. So <laughs> find me on OnlyFans, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean OnlyFans? I mean, is that it? It's like, only like, your fans. <laughs> do you know what OnlyFans is? OnlyFans? Yes, it is. I, I, I'm i familiar with it. Yes. Illegal? Is that is it censored? Okay, well, you know. Hmm. You know what? Maybe you two can answer that question. I'm just <laughs> I'm just moderating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. Please, uh, you know, I have a copy. Of, I, have, I have my book, The Art of Being Yay. I have a wellness brand built around that about being happy. So follow me on platforms for a happy... Uh, in this encouraging stuff, read my book, and uh, it's uh, it's available on Audible and Amazon, and it was bestseller. It was a forward by Margaret Cho. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm b- building on. Oh, that's fantastic! I'm certainly looking forward to it. And uh, Nikki, what can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond? Hopefully, a lot of TV appearances. <laughs> um, that's not something I have direct control over. Um, I just finished filming a, a guest star role on the show Good Trouble for season four. That'll be coming out probably this summer. Um, you can still catch me in The Dropout on Hulu playing real life uh, woman Anna Ariola. And um, yeah, and I'm working on a bunch of audio books. So um, right now I'm recording a nonfiction about the uh, the upping co- or the the evolution of drag coming out of Brooklyn in the early 2000s. Uh, so yeah, I look forward to a lot of cool projects releasing throughout the year. And certainly do so, and we're looking forward to it as well. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Mm. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Uh, biggest influences. Uh, well, I, I would say in terms of a writer for me, um, I would say, well, obviously, Joe, just Joe Coy, you know, um, paving the path for Filipino American um, comics. And he also, uh, every, you know, everyone auditioned for Joseph, which is his new series on ABC. Um, so definitely him as a writer. Um, and I would also say, like, and it, primarily because it's a show that also has a Filipino protagonist is Miranda Kwok. Uh, Miranda Kwok, because she created the show The Cleaning Lady. Um, and I'm also a nerding out fan of Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I mean, like, from Fleabag, because I come from theater, so it's like Fleabag, she created the show, she's a writer, she's a boss-ass bitch, she's just like, she's like literally everything. She's a theater girl, and she creates television, and she acts, like that's just, she's everything, yeah. Oh, it's amazing, and then um, Aiden as well, or let's see, I'm trying to think, who 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 do we, uh, who, who are we missing here for biggest influences? Do we cover everybody? Oh, you know what, let me go, because uh, um, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is definitely a segue one for me. Love her, love her work. Love um Fleabag's one of the best shows ever, period. Um, I would say the um my showrunners from one day at a time, Gloria Calderon Kellett and Mike Royce, have been just amazing. They're both just amazing human beings and very talented. Um, but also just uh what I'm in this you know oversaturated Hollywood market and age of streaming and social media, it's I mean, I've I've really kind of embraced branding. And I don't mean from a commercializing kind of point of view. I mean, from a mission, vision, values, like CEO of my own self business as artist point of view. And that aligning and working with artists and professionals with a shared brand uh, for inclusion and diversity and um, uh, you know, sustainability, um, about, uh, responsible storytelling, conscientiousness, and, um, really not being, um, proselytizing, but a little bit of edutainment in there just to, um, help, uh, infuse entertainment, um, with, um, a mission beyond just being fun. Um, like those are the artists that I have most 
adored working with, the artists that I most keep in touch with, um, you know, producers, directors, fellow actors, writers. Then, um, and I think that you're know, working on one day at a time has uh, was really a highlight for me in terms of my development as an artist and continues to be um, a guiding light for me today. That is so amazing, guys. I mean, you guys got some great stories there. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Be yourself. <laughs> um, it's so cheesy. I don't know. Be your, like, oh. I think especially in Hollywood, and I think mm. it's something Aiden said before many times, is like, you cannot, you can't be anybody else. You really have to embrace who you are. Like, I think that's, Aiden, you said you were teaching some kids um, in Pennsylvania where you are at class. And, and the thing is, is like, if you don't embrace who you are, you're just going to lose yourself in Hollywood. So, and I think that that's especially what we did with this, with this show was like, we really embraced our stories. We embraced our uniqueness and we, um, we brought that to the, to the camera and to this project. So, um, that's probably what I'd also tell my younger self. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Who's oh. next? All right. I would say. Your emotions won't lie to you. Lean into them. You might you might make some mistakes, but you'll find in the long in the long scope of things. Listen to your emotions. If you listen to your emotions, you'll get there eventually. You you might make a few missteps along the way, but that's part of the learning process. Don't ignore your emotions. Listen to your emotions. Lean into mm. your gut. Yes, definitely. Or, or you'll be totally lost. Yes, I should and do that too. So eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I like you, that you one. <laughs> It was and uh, Nikki. How about you? Best advice? I would say, be generous. The uh, self care is important, so you know, make sure you've got your own resources covered. But I, I, I don't just mean you know fiscally or energy wise. I mean just the spirit of of generosity. I think that um, Hollywood can feel, and it is rather competitive. And um, it's easy to get stuck in a mind frame of starvation mode and um, pettiness and insecurity. And none of that helps your art. None of that helps you as a business person, as a professional. Um, and quite and networking isn't about finding people who are going to help you. It's collaboration and networking for me. What has really helped. You know, reframe things for me is thinking about it as um, collaborative solutioning for puzzles that a lot of people have. And, you know, is what I do um, going to contribute to the solution for your puzzle today? Maybe, maybe not. How about this other puzzle tomorrow? Maybe we're a perfect fit. Um, and connecting other people whose work I love and believe in um, with you know, like minds and kind of spreading that love around. Um, and, and that has really in a very difficult up and down emotional roller coaster of a career, um, really given me a, a guiding light and a community of of people that I I, I love to work with and, and love to collaborate with. And so I would that's something I tell my younger self and any artists coming up because it's, you know, we're really oversaturated in content. And I, I think it's you know, just looks and talent are never going to be enough for that, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a really good point as well, too. So once again, the Asian comics, uh, Nikki Andres, uh, Anna Parsons, and Aiden Park on the Mike Wagner Show with uh, Asian American Eyed and Immigrant Comedy Special on the Real Women's Network. Guys, a very big thank you for your time. You all were absolutely fantastic. Loved you guys. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep in touch, keep us up to date and everything else. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What are your websites? How do people contact? Where can people uh, purchase or check out uh, Asian American Eyes and more? Uh, Anna, I'm Anna Tuazon Parsons, A N A T U A Z O N P A R S O N S. That's at Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, I think Anna Tuazon Parsons act for, for Facebook. Uh, I have a website, AnnaParsons.com. There's always just Google in general. Just Google. <laughs> you mean me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Okay. All right. Uh, guys. Oh, you can find me um, on all socials at Mix Nikki E. That is M X N I C K Y E. And my website is NikkiEndress.com. And you can catch our, and I link to, we cross link to everything. So if you find one of us, 
You will find Asian American <laughs> eyes. You will find the rest of us. Just f- Google it. It's 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 great. We we try to be very discoverable. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing. Aiden, where can we find you at? Um, well, at one of their platforms and uh, at, <laughs> at Aiden Park Show. Um, check out my website, um, The Art of Being a Yay, where you'll be able to, you know, uh, get on my newsletter. There's a feel better newsletter that goes out every week and lots of helpful tips and fun things and uh, get a copy of my book. And don't forget to get a copy of Missing. Um, and <laughs> yes, or also, you'll go missing. Yeah. So. <laughs> get Missing and The Art of Being a yeah. Yes, that's right. What a combination. Guys are very big. Thank you for your time. You guys are fantastic. Looking forward to you soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish y'all best. And guys, you've got a great future ahead of you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you so you. much, Mike. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosin-Zia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>